What's up, good people? We're back with the Good Ass Sports Top 5 Podcast, the podcast where we debate controversial top five sports topics. It's, it's your boy, Bryce, double X, V, double I. Follow me on Twitter. I'm joined by contributors. Introduce yourselves. What's going on, man? What's going on? Jerry here. How y'all doing? What's up, everybody? It's Scruff, a.k.a. Scruff Lion, a.k.a. I hold back no opinion. Back with another top five. Y'all know what time it is. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We are back. We are back. In today's top five, we've got the top five shooting guards in the NBA. When we say the top five shooting guards in the NBA, we're talking about the current NBA. So as of today, who is your top five? Let's, let's open the floor with Jay, man. Jay, who's your top five? Let's hear it. Man, my top five, I got James Harden, number one, Clay Thompson, number two, Jimmy Butler Buckets, number three, DeMar DeRozan, number four, and number five, I got Bradley Beal. I like it. I like it. I like it. Okay, okay. Scruff, what's yours look like, man? Hey, man. Uh, I mean, I had James Harden at the top. You already know what's going on there, man. Um, DeMar DeRozan at the two spot. Clay Thompson, I uh, had him at three. Jimmy Butler, I had him at the four spot. And then closing on my top five, had the young promising guard, Devin Booker. Okay, okay, okay. I feel that. I'm pretty much in the grants, but I got a little I got a little switch up on the bottom. So I got one, James Harden, two, DeMar DeRozan, three, Clay Thompson, four, Jimmy Butler. But number five, instead of Devin Booker, I went with the Wiz kid, Bradley Bill, Bradley Buckets, man, Bradley Bill, the Panda, man. I, I had to, I had to throw him at number five. So let's get it started, man. Clearly, the consensus number one is James Harden. Uh, I don't think any, I don't think it's too much arguing about that. But what do I do see here? Is I see Jared through Clay Thompson at the number two spot. Hey, I don't know how. I don't know, man. Thompson, DeRozan. What, what, what were you thinking, Jared, when you when you threw Thompson number two? Man, I just had to go with Thompson, man. Just on accolades, just on all-around player, offense, defense. I just had to go Thompson, man, because he's taking that responsibility every night to guard the opposite team's best player, even whether it's a point guard or a shooting guard, because Stephen Curry is not guarding the top point guards in the league, so he's taking on that responsibility. And, man, when you score 37 in a quarter, man, you got to be you in that upper, that upper echelon. You're heralded. So, yeah, that's how I was feeling about it. But no, nothing to take away from DeRozan. DeRozan's a great player. I feel that. I feel that, man. I guess when I think about when I think about Thompson, the thing that the thing that kind of turns me away from Thompson at my number two spot is I think if Thompson was the the quote unquote leader of a team, if he had to guide the team as the as the go to guy, I wonder what that team would look like. And I feel like Demar Derozan as a go to guy has proven that. That he can he can wear those pants. He can he can he can play that role. He can be a go to guy. I mean, you talk about a guy that's what what he's top top ten in, the, in, in scoring in the league right now, uh, averaging around twenty five a game. Uh, I mean, Demar Derozan stepped his game up. He stepped his game up big time this year. And uh, Kyle Lowry hasn't really looked like the same player. But it seems like Demar Derozan has only exceeded uh, exceeded expectations. Scrap, what were you thinking when you threw Demar number two? Yeah, DeRozan, man, DeRozan, DeRozan been balling out, man. I not honestly initially I had Clay Thompson at the at the two spot, and then I really started to take a little bit deeper look. And uh, you know, we talk about Jared was talking about responsibility. You know, Demar DeRozan's responsibility on that team, man, it's a huge responsibility being the leading scorer of that team. You know, he also you know shares that responsibility with Kyle Lowry, but you know he's putting up twenty five plus a game last season. 27 a game, and he's showing low for that Raptors team. And if you if you seen my article about the Raptors, you know you would have seen that they had the best record in the Eastern Conference last three years total combined. You know, so um, that's why I ultimately put Demar Derozan up there. But Clay Thompson, man, no disrespect because the, the jump shot is there, and that's one thing Demar Derozan doesn't quite have. But he scores nonetheless, and he gets to the bucket at will. Um, that that man is a savage. No, nah, that's for sure. That's for sure. And definitely shout out to your article. Shout out to the blog. Anybody listening, please check out the blog, www.goodassportsblog.com. 
com. All your content, anything you need, all of our podcasts are always up there. And so getting back to uh getting back to Clay versus Demar, one thing one thing I would caution with uh with Clay Thompson is how he gets his buckets. To me, Clay Thompson is the ultimate the ultimate complimentary player for any superstar because he can put up 20 a game and, and he doesn't necessarily need to be the key cog in the offense or he doesn't necessarily need to be holding the ball and doesn't have to be dribbling the ball too much to get his buckets. That's one thing That's one thing out of Clay I think is rare and I think that like he doesn't get enough credit for it and I wonder how that would translate on his own. You never know. Maybe on his own. We'd be looking at a guy dropping 30 a game. What you think, Jerry? You think on his own, Clay would succeed? Oh, yeah. I think Clay, if Clay was on the team by himself, I think he's averaging 27, 28 easily to me. And the thing is, you got to remember there's two sides to the ball. You got to play offense, and then you got to go back and play defense as well. So once you separate both of those, then it's really you got to go with the all-around better player to me. So, yeah. Yeah, I hear that, and that's yeah, forty that. that five percent from three out of Clay Thompson, man. That don't that don't hurt right there. Yeah, man, Clay Thompson, bro. You put him on the right team, he 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 is the superstar in any given team. You know, put him on put him on the seventy sixes. You know what I'm saying? That's that's that needs somebody that could be a go to score for them. He'd be putting up twenty five game easy. All right, quick quick rapid fire question, guys. Straight up trade DeMar DeRozan for Clay Thompson. So DeMar goes to the Warriors, Clay goes to the Raptors. Who has a better season? Who has a better season as far as individually? Um, I don't know, man. I wouldn't personally I wouldn't do that trade if I was the Warriors. No, I don't um, I don't mean that I don't mean that as a trade as a trade proposal. I mean that is in the sake of ranking them. Who has a better mm. season if, if the roles were reversed? Wow. Basically what I'm asking is can Demar can Demar get his on a team like that? I think he'd get his, but not to the same extent that he's getting his in Toronto. Jared, what do you think? I think you'd have, I think Clay Thompson would have a better season because, especially if if you put in Demar Derozan on the Warriors, the Warriors aren't a ball dominant team. They like to move the ball around, so he wouldn't really fit. He's more of a ball dominant player. So yeah, gotcha. I would have to go gotcha. with Clay. I think Clay would have a, a better season. Yeah, All right, let's keep it moving. Now. Let's keep it moving. Let's keep it moving. So let's look at our number four spot. Uh, Scruff, ours lined up. We both had Jimmy Butler. Uh, Jerry, you had DeMar DeRozan down at that four spot. What do you like about What do you like about Jimmy more over DeMar? What do you What do you appreciate about his game? Why Why would you Why would you put him higher than DeMar, DeMar DeRozan? Man, see what I did. I went off eye test, and when I look at Jimmy Butler, he just got more of that dog in him, man. He goes after it like one of the top players in the NBA does, and he, he's going hard every single possession. He does not take a possession off, and, man, he got. I think he's a three-time All-Star. He's made an all-defensive team. He's had success in the playoffs. So, man, I just had to go with Jimmy Buckets, man. I had to. I had to. He got the ball handling. He got the defense. He's improved his jumper since he's been in the NBA, and he's a leader. He took that Timberwolves team who didn't even make the playoffs last year, and now they're in the third seed in the Wild Wild West, man. So, yeah, I got to gotta give Jimmy Buckets his respect. Yeah, Jimmy Butler is that dude, man. Uh, big time, big time respect to Jimmy Butler, man. He really just came out of nowhere on that Chicago Bulls team and just really just grew into a great player. You know, always been a two-way player, man. you right, though. You got that dog in him. He arguable that two spot, man. I respect that decision. I definitely respect that. I just don't know if he could carry a team the way DeMar DeRozan could carry a team. That's what I was thinking, Scruff. I've never seen Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Butler's playoff playoff acumen is one to be questioned. Uh he just he just not in the playoffs often. I mean, not not to say that those Bulls teams were any good towards the end of his tenure with them, but he didn't have them in the playoffs. And I mean, wait, what are you talking year? about? He made the playoffs every year in Chicago. Did what? they make the playoffs there last year when he was in Chicago? Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, they were the eighth seed. All right, okay. They wasn't okay. a threat though. 
They but want yeah. a threat, but I, I see I, your point. I, wait, how are you going to not call them a threat when they almost beat the number the number one seeded Celtics and then Rondo went down with an injury? What, what are you talking about, dude? He, <laughs> definitely, sure, he definitely was a threat. Yeah, no, no, yeah, remember, was, and they, they should have won the that. They was in the mix. They was in the mix. They should have won that series, and then Rondo got hurt, and then it was a wrap. Yeah. Did they have Nate yeah. Robinson on that team? No, no, they didn't have. Bro, didn't no, have this is last year. This is no. last year. I'm talking about last year. Last year, I, I don't know why that. I don't know why that first round exit, but they did slip into that AC. And I need to. I, I'm sorry about that. You're right. You are right. I missed. I missed on that. They were that AC, and Jimmy. Jimmy Butler did ball out, and Rondo did get hurt. Ah oh, man, that's tough, man. That's tough because at the beginning of the season, Jimmy Butler was playing out of his mind last year. Uh Man, my thing is, yeah, when you take a tough. team that didn't make the playoffs last year and now the Timberwolves are third third in the West, man, that's that's respect right there, especially in the stacked West. Because the West, it's not really the bottom half isn't that as good in past years, but it's top heavy. So for them to be third, man, that's a lot. That's a lot of work. That's a lot of good work right there. Uh, yeah, it is good work. They had they did they had a couple pieces, but yeah, definitely a big part of it is Jimmy. Hey, uh, Jeff Teague, nice piece. Yeah, there too. And I got a. I think I. I think I had. A, I think I had. A, I, I. I got confused. It was the 2016 season. They didn't make it. So the, it, they, he's made it every year, but one. So I'm sorry. I, I came in with the wrong with the wrong year on that. The 2016, they they missed the playoffs with Jimmy Butler leaving. But I mean, that's that's neither here nor there. Um, I definitely think I underrated them maybe a little bit when making my top five, but uh, it's it's still tough it's still tough for me to put them over to put them over guys like Demar Derozan and Clay Thompson, just because I think those guys have a little more ability to lead a team. Uh, these playoffs will be will tell us a lot though. These playoffs will tell us a lot. So I'm definitely looking forward to seeing those. Uh, so keeping it moving, let's go to the five spot. Uh, I've got Bradley Bill, Scruff. You've got Devin Booker, Jerry. AKA Walsh, Young Kobe. Bradley. AKA Young Kobe. That sounds a little <laughs> a tad ambitious, but I, I feel you. I feel you, Jerry. You also have Bradley Bill. So uh, let's let let's 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 go head to head with these two dudes, man. Devin Booker, man. We all know him for his seventy point outburst, which uh, you can't take that away from anybody. Seventy points is. That's that's just that's a feat. That's a feat. But uh, what do what do you what, what do you like about Devin Booker's game, Scruff? Why why is he in your top? Why is he in your top five? Man, I, what do I like? I I, I I fucking love this guy's game. Man, this guy's game is phenomenal. This guy's ability to move without the ball is 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 at a superior level. And this guy is is young, man. He's just really just starting to come into his own. So just to see that glimpse of a seventy-two point performance from last season coming in again this season starting to get some better pieces around him got a young team around him but really man he's he's it's all lies on him on that offense man and he's had some big time performances um I, that I, I i i just think he's big time man i see him i see him in that clay thompson role you know i, I could see him being that kind of player you know and uh um, the only reason I gave him five over uh, Beal, I think Beal really he 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 had that five spot for me. But I just think he's uh, not really performing as high as he could be this season. And Devin Booker's taking a massive step forward this season. So um, you know that's why I got Booker at that five spot, and I, I dropped Beal to me out of my top per, personal top five. But you know that that man is tough himself. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I, I, I'd say the one thing that gave that I had to give Bradley Bill the nod over over Devin Booker is just the fact that Bradley Bill contributes to a winning team. I mean, I think the Wizards are sitting at twenty six and twenty right now. And what's today? Today is the uh, the twenty second, Monday the twenty second, and they're twenty twenty six and twenty. They're a decent record, fourth in the East. And I mean, you're talking about a guy that without him, I mean. They're 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 probably nowhere near the record they've got right now. That's a key cog of their team. Even John Wall said it himself. That's their MVP right now. And without him, they're probably not in that position. Uh, Devin Booker is he's not he doesn't have too big of an impact on winning. But I definitely think that uh, that he has potential. He has potential to crack this list. 
sooner than later. Jerry, Jerry what do you think about the comparison between uh, Devin Booker and Bradley Beal right now? Yeah, I, I can put Devin Booker as a top five shooting guard right now. It's just, just too much losing, man. Just way, way too much losing. And when you're on a bad team in the NBA, you put up a lot of stats. You put up a lot of stats, but they're really they're empty stats because you're not winning any games. So yeah, I just couldn't. Because if you remember when Demarcus Cousins was in on Sacramento, when he's on the Sacramento Kings, he put up huge numbers. But they never won any games. So I mean, yeah, when you're on a bad team, you're taking a lot of shots, and you're not winning a lot of games. So there's no way I could put him top five over Bradley Beal, who's just man. He led the Wizards this whole year for real. And man, I think they what the four. I think they're the fifth seed right now. So I mean, he's contributing to their success, and he's had playoff success as well. You know, every time he's been in the playoffs, they've at least won one series. So yeah, I got I had to give it to Bradley Beal, for sure. Yeah, yeah, I feel you. I definitely feel you, man, and I agree. But like I said, I definitely think uh, I definitely think Booker Booker's on his way to cracking that top five list. And I got a feeling that when he does crack that top five list, he'll be closer to one than he is to five. Um, so he he, he just got to wait his turn. That's for sure. A uh, couple one couple things I want to throw in there is a couple honorable mentions, man. One dude I want to give a little a little shine to is the boy C.J. McCollum, man. I, I don't see this dude getting too much shine in general, and it was definitely it definitely came down to him and Bill for my last spot on my top five. So uh, shout out to C.J. McCollum for making that uh <laughs> that honorable mention list on the top five. <laughs> man, I yeah, also want to shout definitely. out Victor Oladipo too, man. He needs to be an all star this year, man. He's been balling out out of control. He got traded to the Pacers, man. He he, he needs respect. Because he's been he's been leading that team to the playoffs this year, so man, put yeah, some respect on that Vic. boy's name, man. Victor Oladipo, man, PG County native, man. Gotta love it, man. Gotta love it. You're right. I, I should have left him out, man. He de he definitely belongs. He definitely belongs up there. He's right outside my top five too. Yeah, that man Oladipo having a hell of a year, man. man McColl McCollum too. Uh, you know, definitely big time performer. You know that boy. That boy. Uh, Lehigh, Lehigh native, man. That man really balling out in the NBA. And Lehigh's yeah. own, man. That, that that's crazy to go from Lehigh to where to as far as he's gotten, man. Shout out, shout out, shout out to him. Shout out to McCollum. <laughs> hey, man. Hey, so I, I I like the list we come up with. It seems like we got a couple consensus. Everybody's got James Harden. Everybody's got Demar Derozan. Everybody's got Clay Thompson, and everybody's got Jimmy Butler. So hey, we'll lock those four in as a consensus top shooting guards in the NBA, good-ass sports. Hey, fellas, another great podcast. Man, shout-out to good-ass sports. Look out for all the content daily. Man, look out for Scruff Stance. Look out for Bryce's game predictions and keys to victory. Yeah, man, we coming. We coming. Top five. Let's get it. Awesome. Hey, hey, one more thing, everybody. Be sure to follow us on all the social platforms at Good Ass Sports. That's at Good Ass Sports. And be sure to check out the website, www.goodassportsblog.com. Good Ass Sports for the Culture, signing out.